I went from being a bad medical student to being a good medical student after fixing my daily workflow. What is my daily workflow? Well, my daily workflow in medical school is how I study, what I study, and in what order I study. Active recall and practice testing work. Uh, highlighting, rereading, and underlining don't work. With that in mind, I developed a daily plan for my learning in medical school. This strategy prepared me for step, eliminates the unnecessary, and follows along with my school's lecture. As a disclaimer, um, this is just what works for me. It might not necessarily work for you. Don't listen to anyone on the internet who tells you there is a perfect way to study. There isn't a perfect way to study. Everyone is different. There is no perfect person, so there's no perfect study strategy. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Zach and I'm a second year medical student in Philadelphia. So first thing, what's the first thing I do? I do all my Anki reviews. I am most productive in the morning, so I wake up and do my Anki reviews right away. This usually takes me around maybe three to five hours every day. I do this first thing in the morning because I find that it's the most important thing I do, so I wanna do it right away. Spaced repetition is proven to improve retention over time, and Anki is great at making me do that. Um, as I go through the cards using the On King, I make sure I understand the cards rather than memorizing them. This is why it takes me around like three to five hours to do them as opposed to like 30 minutes. But this is also why I retain the information so well. So what might this look like? Well, if I go to my Anki, I'll just wake up and luckily I only have 20 right now, but I just do it and start smashing through some cards. And again, I would go through this until I finish all my reviews. The next thing I do is I watch the third party video from tomorrow's lecture. So what does that mean? Well, there's Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, Sketchy, a bunch of resources. I'm gonna make another video on what resources to use and why to use them. But I wanna look and learn the content from tomorrow's lecture. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna make sure that when I show up to lecture, which usually has a little bit more advanced information, um, maybe, not as summarized and general information that's maybe a little more difficult to understand than the third party resources. So when I get a basic understanding of that material from these third party resources, I show up to lecture just knowing a lot more and being able to digest the information much better than if I showed up cold. So again, I review all my Anki cards and then I watch a third party video that has the content that is related to tomorrow's lecture. If tomorrow I'm learning about diabetes, today I'll watch a third party, maybe Boards and Beyond video or Pathoma video on diabetes. And then I'll learn that material from that video. The next thing I'll do is I'll do the related new Anki cards to that third party video. So I showed it in a video before, but if I go to my browse section here, and I watched a video, let's say, I don't know, I'll just say I watched a Pathoma video, because I did do this earlier this week, is I watched a video on the parathyroid gland. So I go to Onking Step 1, Pathoma, Endocrine, and then hit the parathyroid gland, hit Command A, hit Command J, and then learn all these cards. Again, when I'm going through these cards, I wanna make sure that before I just blow into this kind of studying here, I wanna go through each of the cards here and just read them and see if I understand what's written underneath, see if I know kind of and could explain this to a friend. This is because again, Anki is a tool, it's not a teacher. So you wanna use Anki to kind of solidify the information once you've understood it. You shouldn't use Anki to learn the information because that's not what it's made for. You should use it to solidify the information after you understand it from a third party resource. The next thing I do is I watch the lectures from my school. Um, school lectures can be good and they can be bad. Uh, this is why it's not my main learning resource anymore. I switched over at around spring of my first year of medical school and I haven't turned back. With good lectures, I usually watch them at two times speed and I know this sounds silly, but I enjoy them. Um, I don't take notes, I don't rewatch them, I just sit and listen. I try and see like where the professor is coming from. Usually they'll integrate clinical vignettes and kind of other stories from their time as a clinician. And I've already built my understanding of this topic through the third party resource and through Anki. So now I get to learn things for the sake of learning, 
new research, new procedures, um, clinical vignettes, just interesting things that are just fun to listen to. And I find when I do this, I retain the information much better. And I also just enjoy watching the lectures more. Um, again, I just don't, I don't take notes. Maybe I'll pause it if something really doesn't make sense and I'll look it up and maybe write down kind of, okay, just to, just to work it out in my head, but I won't look at those notes again. I'll just kind of use it to kind of solidify the information in my head. It's usually information that will help me be a better clinician, but not necessarily a top exam performer. That's why I take this kind of relaxed approach when watching lectures. But when I find when I take this relaxed strategy, I retain much more information and spend less time with the lectures than when I was actually just pausing and taking notes, pausing, taking notes. And rewatching lectures is such a time sink. I stopped luckily very early on, but if you're doing that, I really suggest not doing that. And then with bad lectures, I just don't watch them. Uh, my time is too important. There are too many good resources out there to waste my time with a bad lecture. I value my time above all other things. Finally, the last thing I do is practice questions. After I've solidified my content base, I test myself. Practice testing is consistently shown to be one of the most if not the most effective method for consolidating information. As I'm just beginning my step one revision, I do only 10 questions a day, five questions of old material and five questions from new material. And I use a couple resources for this, but again, I don't wanna bog you guys down with that information yet. I will be making a video on what resources I use and why I use them. As I get closer to my step exam, I'm guessing I will ramp up these daily questions and make them a bigger priority in my daily routine. So all in all, what is it again? Do your Anki reviews first. Next, watch a third party video on the content of tomorrow's lecture. Then do that third party video's new Anki cards. Make sure to understand it and not memorize. Number four is I watch the school's lectures. And number five is I do practice questions. So that's it. Um, this strategy works for me. It eliminates the unnecessary and focuses on the important. The things that I have found to make the biggest impact on my content retention and exam scores. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you on the next one.